Uh, <clears throat> hello, how's everyone doing today? Hopefully everybody's been doing good, doing great, applying these things, showing more efforts, having more efforts, being diligent in applications, and uh, everything else in between, correct? Uh, so I basically don't really know what I'm going to talk about, but more or less have to address this main issue just because Christ uh, himself, obviously he let me understand the depth of what he actually has said. And my last post, I was speaking about lukewarmness and the reasons why all Christians, well, a majority of the Christians are going to be uh, in the lake of fire uh, because of this, because of the lukewarmness. And so, I mean, most of them have already confessed that they're lukewarm, but because they continue saying that, well, God hasn't really spit me out yet. I don't really have to worry until I get to that point. But realistically, they're using that as a crutch uh, to prevent them from actually, you know, taking the step foot, uh, taking the right foot forward and actually, um, you know, taking a leap of faith and just trusting God that everything is going to be fine. Uh, if if they actually do uh, take that leap of faith with God and they choose to actually you know, stop worrying about those types of uh, of actions and activities that are going to prevent them and hinder them from uh, departing and detaching themselves from the lukewarm lifestyle. And just their own definitions, just because their own definitions, they're going to be relying on their own understandings uh of what lukewarm actually is and because of that they're never going to get out of it the devils are continually going to beat them up and batter them down uh to obviously accept their uh definition of lukewarmness in favor of god's definition of lukewarmness and obviously christ's definition of lukewarmness and because of that they're going to keep repeating the same old cycles over and over again uh believing that they're actually finally getting out of the mire and finally getting out of the mud but realistically they're just uh drugged up and just you know hallucinating uh thinking that they're finally you know moving in the right direction but in reality that couldn't be any further from the truth they're taking baby steps and christ in short wants to just kick them forward that way they actually get out of that way of thinking but christ being a king is not obviously going to uh tell you or beg you to obviously serve him and to finally get out of that lukewarm lifestyle instead he uses servants and messengers to help you really get this point across through your head and that way you just stop being so naive about his holiness you stop being so naive about what lukewarm actually is and you really begin to obviously mature and realistically just figure out what these things actually are you study the scriptures of uh to actually be able to know what god's heart is but you're going to have to study the scriptures also to know what lukewarmness is uh, just because you're going off your own knowledge and understanding and you're getting absolutely nowhere unfortunately everyone anyone could tell you you're doing a good job this is a psalm in itself how people will praise you when you're finally doing you know good for yourself uh but in all reality uh, you really need to um, obviously mature. This is the whole premise of this video. I've repeated it like four times already. You really need to mature and start doing these things for you, wanting to better yourself for you, wanting to better yourself for Christ, and obviously stop um, being so dependent on another individual as his praise to figure out if this is the correct path that you're actually uh walking on and that christ is actually happy with you i can tell you right off the bat if people are praising you for the little things that you obviously do and the little things that you say you're still on the broad path of destruction uh, christ gave us clear commands and obviously clear ways for us to be able to tell uh, when we're actually walking on the narrow path and when we actually are uh not on the broad path of destruction he said that woe to you uh, when people speak well of you, automatically that's a red flag in Christ's eyes. You really need to stop uh, saying that, oh, well, you know, I'm doing something good. And, and you know, Christ is really, I, and everybody's praising me and, and really rooting for me and, and all this other stuff. But realistically, he said that if you are 
uh, a real prophet of the Lord and a real prophet of God. People are going to hate you. You're going to be doing things that is going that is going to irritate the kingdom of darkness. It's going to irritate other individuals and spirits. And not just by mentioning Jesus Christ alone, but obviously by you uh, really applying yourselves and just um, really putting it in gear for you to actually be able to be this disciple of Christ and to stop being so nonchalant about this discipleship with Christ and, and really live by that um um what's the word by that verse in this in the gospels how they said that many will try to enter heaven and will not be able to and so many christians even well he let me understand and uh and and know for certain that a majority of the christians that are going to be in the lake of fire because there's going to be a lot of christians in the lake of fire if not you know every christian that we see in america is going to go to the lake of fire it is going to be because of lukewarmness. That's just one of the reasons why they realistically did the bare minimum uh, as a Christian and as their duty as a Christian and, and a disciple of Christ uh, to maintain that um, that title of Christian. And realistically, they really didn't do above and beyond what Christ himself actually wanted them to do. Uh, and they just set the standard very low for themselves uh, because they obviously... You know that's the type of message that there were message that they were actually being preached. Uh, that's also what just everybody was just telling them that that's all they realistically knew, and so their own friends were encouraging their own destruction. You know, none of them were were giving them constructive criticism because uh, it's like, wow, John, you're really gonna say that? Like, why would you say such a thing like that? You know, it's typically frowned upon in the Christian community for somebody to just say, you know what, just. Uh, wake up and you know just recognize the type of lifestyle that you actually are living is 100% lukewarm you think you're serving the Lord by doing the bare minimum and realistically you're going straight into the lake of fire Christ was clear because you're not hot or cold I wish that you were uh, cold that way you know obviously I would be able to spit you out but he's going to spit you out regardless so uh, this is going to be the premise maturity but um yeah, so grace and peace be multiplied to you and mercy. Uh, the grace is to be able to understand and to be able to, you know, really understand the depth of what I actually am trying to uh, to say. Uh, and that way you don't actually miss anything. And the peace to know that what I'm saying is truth and the mercy to actually be able to, to know that this is from God and that we're actually able to change, that we're actually able to repent. And you're able to let go of your um, of your baby understanding that you obviously are latching onto. You're gonna hold on to this this understanding and this childish way of thinking for the rest of your uh, walk with Christ, uh, unless somebody tells you to let it go. Unfortunately and sadly, that's just reality. I see it all the time. There's still many Christians that are still regurgitated regurgitating the same old garbage god is love god is love and they're really too scared to actually preach these types of messages they really want to encourage everyone that yeah we're all going to get to heaven and everything's going to be fine but realistically that's a fairy tale uh and christ himself was perfectly and 100 percent clear about who was actually going to go into the uh, into the kingdom of heaven and uh you see said tax collectors and harlots going to the kingdom before you and obviously he said that there was going to be a remnant only that was actually going to make it uh, in the tribulation. So if you know what a remnant is, a remnant is like not even 10%. A remnant is like 1% of like 100%. Of 100%. And honestly, that's, uh, that just glorifies God's and Christ's words. He said narrow is the way. And you people are really going to have to develop a mind of your own for you to actually be able to leave and deviate these paths and to be able to trust Christ 100% and, and to walk alone in short. And that's just something that you realistically need to grow up and mature already. That you realistically need to just walk alone from now on. Uh, nobody wants to walk alone. Everybody wants to be encouraged. Everybody wants to have many individuals actually praising them. Uh, but sadly, that's that's the broad path of destruction. Narrow is the way and the easiest way for you to be able to tell if a person is on the broad path of destruction is to just look at how many individuals are rooting for them, how many people are cheering for them, how many people are speaking well of them. And that's the easiest way for you. That's a telltale sign for you uh, to be able to tell where this person stands with Christ and with God. If they're being 
if they're not being hated, Christ already said, everyone's going to hate you for my namesake. He didn't say or specify that because these individuals are Christians and you're Christians, everybody's going to like you. He said, everyone is going to hate you. Pharisees were still, you know, they believed in God. They held on to this uh, godly image, but obviously they ultimately fell short uh, because of their own self-righteousness and hypocrisy that Christ himself obviously 100% exposed on a daily basis, which forced these individuals to obviously uh, uh, to hate him because uh, obviously, you know, he was addressing these individuals. They knew what was inside. He knew what was inside of their hearts. They had no real desire to change. All of them, one hundred percent, just wanted more people to praise them. This is the exact same types of principles that we are actually seeing uh, with our own firsthand experience on TikTok, on Instagram, with reels. They're all preaching the same old message: God is love, and this and that. And some people do talk about deliverance, which is great, you know, but they're not really getting into these deeper roots and these and, and these more weightier issues that they need to be addressing and actually be um, committed to actually preaching about. Because they just talk about these things every now and then, every now and then. They're just like, ah, eh, well, you know. Uh, Right now, it's not really the time. I feel the moving of the Holy Spirit. When in reality, the Holy Spirit is obviously urging everyone in the body of Christ to be fighting. Which these individuals who are in the body of Christ, 100%, they're going to be doing this because they don't really, they don't have an Instagram page. They don't have a TikTok. They're just like, well, I'm a nobody. If the Holy Spirit is leading me to obviously fast, to be able to engage in spiritual warfare for the children, then that's what I'm going to do. I already know what the Holy Spirit's voice is. I know the times that we're in right now, There's an, and I, especially I know that there's an all-out war happening overhead. And because I know that, then obviously I don't really have time to be doing these types of God is love messages that the false prophets preached in the in the Old Testament. And so realistically, I need to be preaching the same types of messages that the real prophets obviously uh, were preaching. I'm trying to get individuals to actually hearken to like preaching repentance. Many individuals don't want to preach those types of messages. They know that if they preach God is love and these same old messages that we constantly see on a daily basis, they're, they're going to circulate. More individuals are going to want to, uh, they're going to like these things. They're going to save them. They're going to press the copy link button three times. And obviously they already know that individuals are more, um, They obviously want to hear that message. It's just the same old principle, itching ears, itching ears, itching ears. Uh, they obviously all, they're just preaching the same old messages, messages of uh, of itching ears and God is love, God is love. And nobody realistically wants to do it. this type of work and this type of job where you obviously are telling them God is infuriated, God is infuriated, God is infuriated. And to knock it off, stop being such a coward and actually start preaching these types of messages or don't bother. And uh, realistically, they, they still don't want to actually want to preach those messages and and that in itself is just going to expose 100% where these individuals are with Christ. They realistically don't really care about Christ and the things that he loves. They don't want to bother fighting for the things that he loves. And they just want to keep doing things in the same manner, as the, in the same spirit as the false prophets. Uh, before Christ obviously came and incarnated uh, to die for our sins. They're not preaching the gospel. They're preaching themselves. And I don't know if they get revenue or they get money from, obviously, the more views that they get, uh, which they're able to do. And then here you are just supporting these individuals. And just because you're just like, oh, well, the Lord put it on my heart to actually watch this video. And this is some God's perfect timing. And this is, I can't believe that you actually would preach. Ah, uh, knock it off. These devils are 10 times more intelligent than you for them to actually be able to just whisper this thought inside of your ear and then direct your steps for the whole day to get you to read that message. When realistically, you need to obviously break these curses to be able to get to this point to be able to receive these graces to actually be able to know what's god's heart plan and the real status of of god's um where the earth is standing with god 100 percent. and uh, if you want to continue justifying these people these tiktokers these instagram pages in favor of just common principles god does not change whatsoever uh the old testament gave us a clear-cut sign to be able to tell us uh what are the false prophets going to be doing in the last days I mean, these things are in jeremiah i mean this is exactly word for word deed for deed uh these individuals who are actually in 
our time and our day, they already were prophesied many generations ago. And they're doing these things exactly as what uh, the prophet Jeremiah obviously has said. They're preaching the same old garbage messages. They're not really a, uh, uh, preaching the types of messages that God himself wants them to preach. And Jeremiah is already written. And I forgot where it's actually written. It says that... Um, why are we sitting here laughing and having a good time when God has obviously put all of us to shame? We should be sitting down and, and just assembling ourselves and just shutting our mouths and not even bothering saying anything. But uh, this isn't happening whatsoever. For some weird reason and odd reason, these individuals is, think that, yes, this is going to happen. But for some reason that God is still going to preserve his, his saints, he's still going, going to preserve his holy ones when in reality you're on the false prophet side and you think that these promises apply to you when in reality you need to be doing the things that the, uh, the real prophets were actually doing and so you're still basing these things off your own understanding you think that god himself is just 100 percent is approving of your your walk with him you're not even doing the the standard that christ himself already wants you to do and yet you still think that you're entitled so obviously it just loops back to to lukewarmness you're living a lukewarm lifestyle still expecting to reap these promises of God, which is obviously the main issue on why you're not able to receive these promises uh, and why God hates you so much. I know you don't want to hear that message, but uh, there's so many scriptures in, in, in the Bible, so many verses about God saying who he hates, who he doesn't hate. And you think that because God is love, which is true, he's not going to hate you whatsoever. That is a flat out lie. All written through the Psalms is, is all written. God hates the wicked. God hates the wicked. He absolutely despises the wicked. He abhors the wicked. Uh, Zechariah eleven seven, my soul loathed them and their soul also hated me and abhorred me. I mean, honestly, this is the real this is the fact of the matter and all such, and all the realness and, and all reality. And, and many people are so naive to God's holiness. They think that because we're under this new dispensation that God isn't going to hate any Christians. That's a lie. God isn't going to hate anyone. He wants to save the whole earth. That's a lie also. God hates the wicked. And until these individuals obviously repent, you obviously got to say these things in context. He said that he doesn't wish for anyone to obviously perish, but this does not mean... <laughs> Or take away anything from God's holiness and from God's person. He automatically despises these people. He hates the wicked with a passion, with all of his heart. He hates the proud with all of his heart. and But he's still patient with these individuals through this hatred. Just like how it's written that even though we were still God's enemies and Christ's enemies, uh, he died for us. And this is essentially why we obviously love our enemies. And these things in themselves automatically just teach us that you know what we were enemies of God prior to us actually being saved, and in no way, shape, or form were we on good terms with God. We didn't stand uh, righteous before God. We didn't even stand, you know, anything remotely to to being approved by Him or having any type of favor by Him whatsoever. I mean, granted, yeah, He knows the work to, uh, the works that you were going to do, and if you're actually going to uh, submit yourselves to his foreordination and predestination but this is all still heavily dependent on your own willpower uh, on your own what you want to submit to if you want to submit to all of it you want to submit to some of it most of it or just enough to obviously get people to like you and, and so this is this is the main issue you realistically need to really uh, discover yourself what what are your flaws uh your intents why do you do the things that you do and um and that's it. And not really sugarcoat it for yourself ever. Not really justify yourselves or give the devil any reason to come inside of your life to actually justify yourself. That way you truly move in the right direction and you're actually able to finally change, grow up and actually mature in all honesty. Because these things in themselves are your justifications are going to prevent you from actually maturing uh, and every single time. You're going to want to mature. You're going to want to finally break free from these ways of thinking. But the devil is going to whisper in your ear right away. And he's going to tell you, well, it, it's fine. You know, you notice that person over there. He doesn't really do those types of things. And he, I mean, he seems like a good man. of Well, not, they don't even say he seems. It would be too obvious. And look at how much of a man of God he is. So they encourage you to obviously compare yourself to another individual who's probably just as damned as you. And you're sitting here just like, yeah. And, and realistically, 
you're not that sharp. You hear these thoughts and you're like, yeah, that's right. But you completely dismiss the fact that you just heard a thought when in reality you thought you were thinking a thought. And so you, you and then you just continue living this way of thinking, still holding on to that philosophy that, yeah, I'm like that guy. And everything that you do, every single action that you actually commit that is under this Christian, you know, principles and just most of the gospel and not all of the gospel is all centered and revolving around that one little lie that the, that the devil actually whispered inside of your ear. And so um, there's still many different forms and many different ways that you have that inside of your vessel and inside of your life that you actually are revolving your whole discipleship with Christ uh, through these uh, principles. Obviously, comparing is one of the easiest ways for you to actually be able to expose and to actually be able to reveal where you actually are revolving your philosophies and your discipleship with Christ and your your Christian title. Um. Well, with God. And so, uh, this, I mean, these things are pretty, I mean, if, if realistically you're not holding yourself diligent uh, to the word of God, you're not really praying for discernment, you're not really uh, praying to actually be able to serve Christ because that in itself is a priv uh, privilege 100%. There's so many individuals who want to serve Christ, but Christ automatically rejects these individuals and then it goes to you where you have to do the work that you obviously need to do that you were created for and you automatically reject his offer and you automatically reject your own work and he cuts you off. You continue preaching this stupid gospel of it's all about me. This It's my face ministries, first name, last name ministries, buy my book, donate to actually read my book. So many other things that obviously are able that are just one hundred percent not biblically aligned, and in context of the scriptures that Christ Himself actually gave, uh, and the commandments that Christ Himself actually gave to us. He said, "Freely you have given." Oh well, well you have to give freely because freely you have received. And um, and yeah, it's realistically that simple. If you really are as strict, uh, with people as Christ's words are automatically every single individual that is actually charged for the gospel is just canceled. They're not really Christians, are they? They're lukewarm believers. They're 100% phony in the faith. Uh, but you realistically just give these individuals the benefit of the doubt when Christ said those things with the foreknowledge of what was actually going to happen. He knew these individuals were actually going to charge for the gospel. I mean, realistically, he was able to see right through the plans of the devil. Uh, was, he was probably engaged in spiritual warfare most of the time, 24-7, for these things in themselves to be able to teach him uh, where the devil is going to be attacking, how he, has, how he uh, well, the devil has been attacking Christ, for him to be able to notice and to be able to, you know, just expose the devil's tactics and devices. That way people aren't ignorant with these, when these tests actually come inside of their life. These temptations are going to come when they actually do come. Uh, and so that was in short, obviously, what Christ was sent here to do, to destroy the works of the devil. Because um, that, was, that was his whole ministry. And then there's still the work that I obviously am doing, which is just on top of that. So the law of Moses was... Uh, he came here, he built a top of that foundation, and, and still, obviously, because individuals were way too carnal for them to be able to understand. And Christ even addressed that in itself. He's like, well, why, you know, why do we have divorce? He's like, it's not like that whatsoever. You individuals were way too carnal for that, or for you to be able to understand how uh, serious marriage actually is, the soul ties, how powerful marriage actually is, and Christ was basically letting me understand and letting me know how powerful that actually was. That even through that covenant, through the covenant of marriage, that somebody who is an outsider of the family and from the, your bloodline automatically begins uh, to be attached to your bloodline. So that's why, obviously, Mary, uh, Christ's mother, was, uh, you know, that prophecy was able to be fulfilled uh, for Christ, that he's a son of David. Mary was the outsider, and as soon as they actually got married, the, the the two flesh became one. And so Joseph was the one that obviously was the son of David. He was a descendant of David, and that's how obviously Christ was able to be, uh, to be able to fulfill that prophecy. And so Christ was just letting me know and understand, uh, 
how powerful these soul ties actually are uh, and how powerful that covenant of marriage actually is. And so that was just one of the things that Christ himself was just letting me understand and, and letting me know uh, about marriage. And so these soul ties automatically need to be broken. You need to get rid of these things 100% just because of the uh, the binding powers that they obviously have. Uh, the two flesh become one. The two flesh become one. You and the demon, the soul ties that you actually have, the cursed products that you actually have soul ties with. And Christ obviously just wants me to address this uh, issue right away. Uh, and then I got to actually go back to these types of uh, topics that I was just talking about. And, and just because obviously you're able to recognize that these soul ties are nothing to play with. They're nothing nice. If you actually have a soul tie with the wrong person who's a witch, you know, these individuals automatically know it 10 times way more than you know about the spiritual realms. They know what they actually are able to do, what they're capable of doing. And you just sit here just like, ah, I'm so glad that I'm married to this woman. And you don't really realistically even know a single thing about this woman's actual uh, spiritual life or spiritual identity. And so obviously w when sins come into play, uh, the one flesh or well, is now obviously both of you begin to suffer for the same exact sins that you typically get into leviathan if you haven't broken all of these curses in your wife or in your spouse automatically going to have to be paying for that just so this woman is actually able to learn uh and able to understand and a way for her to be able to be delivered if you're not actually able to uh break these curses ahead of time you're unfortunately you're gonna have to learn the hard way uh in instead of you not actually taking care of your wife and you're just thinking it's just a game these soul ties are just a game uh, the spiritual is just a game that mm, Joseph and Mary obviously getting married. Um, that should just expose automatically that these soul ties are not a game whatsoever with anyone. And you need to snip, snip you need to cut these things out uh, as soon as possible just because of the uh, the seriousness and the severity of what uh, these consequences actually are. So I know you get married, you get married to your wife. You deliver yourselves, you've been delivering, and I mean, that in itself is just able to expose, you know, do not be unequally yoked with another individual when you actually decide to marry a person, and this is just the real reason why, well, one of the reasons, many reasons why, uh, as well as that uh, King Solomon obviously also teaches us what could happen if we don't actually uh, equally yoke ourselves with another woman. His heart was led astray. Because of the women, God himself gave him a, a warning what was going to happen if he went after all these different women. And that's in short what actually ended up happening. Uh, but for you to actually be able to deliver your wife uh, is just, just losing the graces that Christ himself has already given you through. And obviously these graces... Uh, these deliverances are done through these graces that you actually have received. Uh, you could just transfer these graces uh, just so your wife is actually able to catch up. I mean, realistically, these things are not going to, it's not going to happen overnight, but they're definitely going to start the process for her to, for her to actually be able to regenerate uh, and for her to actually be able to, um, uh, to actually finally be healed. Uh, from all of her iniquities, from all of her sins, and all the things that realistically were just causing so much damage to her that she realistically didn't notice. It was um, blinding her perception in her own view. She was not actually able to see these things in the spiritual manner. She was revolving everything around the carnal and not really looking at things uh, through Christ's eyes. And so because of it, obviously she fell into a lot of traps with the devil. Uh, it's, which is you went through those same exact traps you ended up falling straight for those little traps and she's going through the same exact thing so uh one of the main things that christ himself tells me about marriage is help one another out help each other out and that's probably one of the most repeated phrases that he obviously says help each other out help each other out help each other out help your son out help this out help that out but uh, these situations obviously uh, need to be addressed uh, as lukewarmness, the real reasons why. 
uh, these individuals are actually going to go into the lake of fire. Most of these individuals heard these types of messages and every single person that is going to, that is a Christian is just going to, uh, is, that actually ends up going into the lake of fire. Uh, excuse me, I'm kind of like speaking fast or something, but a majority of the Christians that are in the lake of fire are going to be in there with this type of foreknowledge already so they're going to hear these messages they're going to reject them in the same manner the false prophets rejected them having nobody to blame but themselves uh a hundred percent and so uh this, sadly that's the that's the fact of the matter the devil deceived them they deceived themselves uh and that's essentially it they wanted to still uh, continue using these a uh, time as a crutch realistically they want to continue using time as a crutch and, and when really in all reality christ wanted them to actually put to just floor it and to just actually let go of everything that was hindering them just like how it's written in the scriptures let go of uh, all these weights and unnecessary baggages that we obviously have in this world and just continue just running toward the race uh or running in the race toward our eternal prize, which is Jesus Christ. Um, 100%. Uh, but still, many individuals are just going to be like, well, you know, they're realistically not really going to be strict. They're going to continue being just letting themselves live liberally uh, and, and just give themselves way too many liberties that they realistically don't have. And so that's going to be their downfall, but you can learn from their mistakes and from just in general how people actually are. You really know how people are. Uh, you know the main types of things that get that get individuals convinced to actually continue uh, living the types of lifestyle that they actually live with no real repentance, with no real change, uh, and obviously with no real discipleship with Christ whatsoever. No deliverance. Tell tell a sign right there. If a woman, if a person, woman, man, whoever is not in deliverance or is not even just you know preaching about deliverance, counterfeit spirits obviously are a real thing. That's a red flag in itself. They're just preaching God is love, another red flag. They're just preaching this and that, but they're not really preaching that God is infuriated. Another red flag. Uh but still uh, individuals are going to give them the benefit of the doubt uh, just because they realistically don't want to hear these types of messages because they're not feel good they're not motivational uh, and it puts way too much condemnation on them way too much of a of a looming sense of judgment uh, coming and just peering itself around the corner uh, and realistically they just want to play dumb they think that if they play dumb they're not actually going to have to suffer the consequences for uh, the rebellion and the types of activities and sins that they were actually in that apparently just got exposed but um, they didn't want to see it like that they're just like no uh, although my sins just got exposed I'm going to continue just putting my faith in Christ and putting my faith in God so you know they're betting on faith but embracing this type of error and many different forms of error uh but all of them are automatically going to go into the lake of fire they're going to perish in their own stubbornness and their own foolishness and their own way of, of thinking through their own understandings and, and just just in their own stubbornness and all honesty they knew that these messages were actually you know somebody was speaking the truth but they just didn't want to believe in all of the details of the things that individuals were preaching these types of messages that they obviously heard and they just went in favor of their own doctrines their own philosophies and their own little foolish heart uh knowing how god actually was in the old testament they probably read the stories of pharaoh plenty of times before and they somehow thought that they were going to have to suffer for that just because they have the title christian uh or they're going to they won't have to suffer in the same manners as the Pharaoh did, because they're not as rebellious or as stubborn as him. When in reality, they're just as stubborn as him, if not more. I'm, uh, Pharaoh didn't really have as much light. And he didn't know about the Messiah, and he didn't know about this and then that. But in reality, these individuals have definitely received a hundred times more light uh, than the generations in the past. And so now they're obviously going to be held accountable with what they do with this amount of light. And that's in short going to be it. They're obviously going to go into the lake of fire if they do nothing with it. If they don't give it to Christ, 
uh, and that's in short it. But um, so yeah, lukewarmness and the real reasons why individuals are just lukewarm. Uh, they're naive. That's one of the main reasons why they're realistically naive to God's holiness. Uh, they think that God is just this care bear, this big buddy that they obviously have. And, but in reality, they haven't really, um, they haven't really conquered that milestone to be able to call him a buddy, to be able to call him a friend. They're realistically just, you know, getting into it way too soon. And they really need to just think rationally and, and just start at the internship, start at the entry level and start as a servant and then build their way up to actually get to that point. Right now, I'm not even at that point whatsoever. Christ sees me more as his son uh, than he sees me as his friend and as his buddy. And then you think that you're obviously just going to get into this buddy relationship with Christ. He's going to give you, uh, he's going to give you a delusion. He's going to give you a familiar spirit, you're, and you're going to think that you're, you're going to be thinking that you're, you're having the time of your life uh, with Jesus Christ, when in reality is just a demon, and that you two are on good terms, and that you, he's your little buddy. You call him Jeets, you call him this, and this is my best friend. And not once have you ever. Uh, attributed your own discipleship with christ as a servant you already have exalted yourself through the you know through the heights and up to the heights and that i'm just your friend and i'm just your buddy with none of the internship none of the entry level none of the servant uh that christ himself obviously wants you to recognize and know for certain that that's all you are to him you're just a servant you're not a son the son abides forever are you going to abide forever Answer the question right now. Are you? No. These things are not guaranteed uh, Guaranteed for you. They're not set in stone. I'm sorry. I'm kind of stuttering a lot. These things are not set in stone for you. You are not God's son, but... Uh, so you, you begin to see how many uh, individuals are in this way of thinking and how many of them are in, are, um, are in trouble with God. How many of them are headed for the lake of fire? Uh, how many of these individuals are obviously, in short, you're just going to end up burning in their own foolishness and in their own uh, understandings and knowledge? Not even wanting to bother letting go of their old knowledge that they actually have for a greater knowledge and a greater understanding of the gospel. Uh, and what they obviously have received and what have gotten and so there's continue being baby christians until they're 45 65 75 and not even bothering ever uh wanting more of an understanding more of a knowledge uh and more of a, an appreciation for what was actually done for them uh and, and yeah i mean sadly that's just a lack of maturity 100%. These individuals are just immature. And they're like little baby birds. Mama bird has to obviously feed me. Mama bird has to obviously do this for me. My uh, my pastor, obviously. Mama pastor has to obviously tell me this. Well, not obviously a, a female, but obviously a male. Uh, pastor and leader has to feed me this type of knowledges uh, and this type of understandings. Because I can't do it by myself. You have to be ordained by the obviously other men, not by God. There's too many false prophets on the face of this earth that claim to be sent from God. I'd rather have these individuals that are ordained by other men who could have been ordained by God teach me and, and, and obviously guide me in this truth. So they're heavily dependent on their own uh, means of actually knowing what is truth instead of just asking christ uh, instead of actually just praying for the truth instead of just praying for these answers uh they've already found a means for them to actually be able to you know uh confirm what is truth to them some of them are just itching ears uh and some of them are just obviously just things like that uh that is just heavily dependent on their own understanding and their own knowledge uh for them to actually be able to know what is truth Hopefully you're able to see right through the devil's tactics how he's able to actually convince you of what you uh, believe or what you think is actually true when in reality it's just another delusion and, and 
it couldn't be any further from the truth. And here you are, just because it's obviously, uh, according to your own understanding, all the pieces of the puzzle are obviously uh, coming together and they're obviously fitting. Uh, you don't have the entire picture in all reality. And so you just continue just looking at the corner piece of these uh, puzzle pieces, believing you got the whole thing already figured out. In reality, you got no idea and no clue what's actually going on. And so another individual actually has all has the same exact puzzle that you actually have, and they actually are coming to more of a knowledge and an understanding of what the actual picture is. And because they actually have that, you know, uh, they're not really uh, because they don't actually rely on um, on that way of thinking, but they actually rely on just. Uh, ensuring that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life for them, and not their pastor, not anybody else. Obviously, they have more of a of a picture than the other person instead of the other person just staring at the corner piece, just like, oh well, you know, and other things like that. And realistically, the other individual who just has a corner piece is the most prideful person on the face of this earth. If you even try to correct the other person, automatically they're going to flare up and get angry. And they're going to be like, you have no idea what you're talking about. They're going to look at your picture. They're going to notice that you obviously, you have a lot of fruits. You have a lot of knowledge. You have a lot of intelligence. But their jealousy is obviously going to blind them from them to actually be able to see and recognize that they obviously can have the same things that you have. Uh, and because of that, um, they're not even going to bother actually asking you for help, asking you what you did, and asking you, you know, how is my picture looking compared to your picture? They're going to tell you straight up, your picture is not even anything close to what you actually think. And you're over here just thinking that you know it all, you got it all in the bag, and everything is just fine and dandy. And realistically, it's not even anything for you to actually be... Uh, mad about disappointed in you're not perfect you're not all knowing for you to actually be able to um to beat yourself up to that extent that oh man i can't believe this happened to me and i thought i was actually on the right path and i thought i was actually you know christ was leading me uh, to his salvation and his truth when uh it's, it happens to everyone in all honesty it happens to the best of us, and realistically, you just need to actually be able to finally leave that type of path that you actually are on uh, and, and really just ground yourself in the truth uh, that is Christ. Let it go. These individuals who have a bigger picture of, or in a better picture of what your picture is, uh, they're polite. They're obviously being, you know, pruned. Uh, they're bearing a lot of fruit. Uh, and they're definitely not like the types of individuals that you're actually going to come into contact with in your church and your congregation who act in the same manner as you act. And because they act like that, everything revolves around that same type of philosophy that because I would do that in this situation, this individual is definitely going to do that. So 100%, it's on you. It's your own fault. Uh, nobody thinks like you. Nobody values your own opinion as much as you do. And honestly, just leave it off on that note. Excuse me.
Uh, so yeah, this is just the fact of the matter um, that you're obviously going to have to accept and be willing to accept that you're on the wrong path and actually be able to confess that verbally and not be really be afraid to confess that. That's one of the main reasons why um, Christians continue staying in the same spot that they've been at uh, for years and years and not really advancing and actually or actually moving forward. Uh, because they're just too afraid to actually confess these types of things because if they don't actually, well, they genuinely feel that if they don't actually confess these things 100%, and then they won't have to deal with the embarrassment and the shame that uh, that comes with actually being wrong. So just out of fear of being wrong and a fear of wasting time, they don't actually confess these things. When in reality, if they actually confess them, they're actually going to get the results that they've been wanting uh, for years and years and that they've been waiting on Christ to actually uh, deliver them and actually help them out. And uh, and so obviously, the decision would still be on you for you to actually be able to choose the wise path. Uh and to just, it's better to be safe than sorry, right? Uh, more often than not, um, you actually will begin to see results if you will just confess that you're actually lukewarm. If you will actually just confess that you're not really a disciple of Christ. Um, the main one, if you just confess that you're not actually saved. Uh, you're not actually going to lose your salvation if you are saved. Uh but obviously, if you actually confess that in itself, that I'm probably not even saved whatsoever, um, you could begin to actually uh, to change, which is the whole premise and the whole thing that Christ himself actually wants from you. He actually wants you to be able to change, want to change, and to just be teachable. Obviously, that's the whole premise of that, uh, is of you actually being able to confess these things. You're not letting pride blind your eyes, and more or less, you obviously already are accustomed to that way of living that, hey, I'm probably lukewarm, I need to confess that, I need to check with Christ uh, to be able to help me out to be lukewarm, and then just go walk with Christ, reach a plateau, and do the same thing again. Hey, I'm probably lukewarm still, I reach a plateau, or hey, I'm not as, as uh, excuse me, hey, I'm not as, uh, as holy as I think. Uh, continue walking with Christ, reach the plateau. I'm not as holy as I think. Continue with Christ, reach the plateau. And obviously, Leviathan is going to continue justifying you. Uh, pride is going to continue justifying you day in and day out. And you're going to continue believing that you're the super Christian. You can't even heal yourself. You think that you're the super Christian. You've never cast out the devil. You think you're, that you're the super Christian because you help out the, the needy and the and the sick, but you don't actually view it as a commandment. Uh you think that you're the super Christian when in reality you've never raised the dead, you've never spoken tongues, and uh, and or you think that you're the super Christian and somebody's doing ten times way more than uh, way many works than you're actually doing, and you just continue justifying yourself, living in this way of thinking where everybody likes me because everybody likes me, I'm actually saved. That is a horrible means of you actually judging for your de for yourself, deciding for yourself uh, oh, what is salvation and if you actually are saved in Christ's eyes. And you really just need to go back to the basics and just read the scriptures themselves to be able to, uh, to tell you, for you to actually discern, uh, to be able to discern if you actually are saved according to the standards that Christ himself has already given us. So... Uh, is that what Christ said? That you're going to be saved by the amount of praise that you're actually going to receive from another person who is a Christian also? Or is it that you're going to be hated for, for my sake? Obviously, he said you're going to be hated. You're going to be persecuted by fake Christians. You're going to be persecuted by Pharisees, or religious spirits, legalistic spirits, and just individuals who are not after the weightier issues that Christ himself actually wants. Uh, them to be um, after and to be addressing like everything that I mentioned in this video children actually being molested children actually being worked towards to be molested, to be kidnapped to be sacrificed, to be able to slit their necks and throats 
and other things like that. And you think that just because I'm a Christian and everybody praises me and I got the love of the congregation that everything is fine and dandy when in reality you couldn't be any uh, more foolish and any more blind when other things like the abomination that I just mentioned are actually happening. And you're just like, oh, well, you know, everything is in God's hands and you're just letting the devil pacify you. You're letting the devil make you lazy. You're not even bothering working for the kingdom of God uh, to be able to actually destroy the kingdom of the devil. As you are a servant of Christ, Christ is not going to serve you at any point. Uh, so you need to be serving him by destroying the works of the devil and destroying uh, the kingdom of the devil. I mean, the devil was actually winning in short for many individuals and in many individuals' his lives through this sin of laziness. Uh, that they didn't actually want to lift a finger up and they continue just, uh, I'll wait on the Lord's timing or all I have to do is just sit still and not bother actually fighting when in reality Christ wants you to pray. Christ wants you to read the scriptures. Christ wants you to gain some discernment. Uh, and Christ wants you to actually be able to, uh, to just let go of that way of thinking and to just be able to free yourself um, from the Christian bondage. Uh, that all these individuals are actually in, uh, that are in, you know, all of these churches, because they just uh, ensnare themselves, uh, and they obviously put themselves in this bondage uh, of laziness by just believing these types of lies, that if I just sit still, Christ is going to do everything for me, or if I just... You know, read the scriptures once a day, or if I just pray for fifteen seconds, or if I just pray, uh, if I just pray like for an hour or two hours, uh, Lord delivers from Satan in general that everything is going to be fine. You're gonna have to cut it out, hundred percent. You're gonna have to knock it off. Uh, I mean, if you want to call yourself a Christian, you're definitely gonna have to cut it out. If you just want to. The, you know, just the praises of men or whatever. Okay, fine, whatever. Just do these good works, but don't call yourself a Christian. That's not even anything remotely Christian-like or anything remotely a disciple of Christ. So you can read the scriptures themselves, the Acts of the Apostles. These people were up, down, left, right, east, west, north, south, everywhere just doing the work of Christ and doing the work of God. They weren't just preaching the gospel and evangelizing either. You need to really just raise the standard to the type of standard that these individuals were by the works that they were actually doing and to stop uh, just being like, oh, well, you know, I don't think I could do this. And I know that I just have to just preach the gospel. Uh, it's, it's convenient because it's really easy for you to actually be able to preach the gospel. But in reality, you need to be casting out these devils. You need to be healing the sick, uh, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, speaking in tongues. I know it's not that difficult. Uh, but uh, interpreta uh, interpreting, interpretation of tongues, interpreting your tongues, uh, and uh, anything else that Christ himself actually has said. And if you feel a tug in the Holy, obviously in your own spirit, by the Holy Spirit, um, to actually engage in spiritual warfare, automatically that's a standard in itself. These three hours are the standard in itself automatically, uh, but the devil and his agents are going to come right after these messages uh, to be able to deceive you to be able to blind your eyes from actually doing these works and to just uh justify you 100 percent. as soon as these justifications come for you and to just not really hold yourself to the, the valedictorian standards that you know very well uh with christ and apply those types of principle uh principles uh to your discipleship with christ uh, then don't bother in all honesty uh you already know better you know how valedictorians were in high school and you need to be obviously holding yourself to those same types of standards because that is what christ obviously is holding you to uh you're like well i can't do it not right now you're gonna have to build that little uh practice makes perfect right you're gonna have to build uh your weight up 
uh, and get to that point. But the most important thing for Christ and to Christ is that you obviously start. You stop being so lazy and you obviously stop listening to these fake pastors. It's just going to be easy. It's going to be a cakewalk. All you have to do is just kick your feet up and everything is going to be fine and dandy. And my pastor said this, the promises, faith comes by hearing. And they obviously twist all these scriptures and they're not really right divided or in context. And so you just continue, obviously, just believing that you actually are saved because of grace, grace through faith. I'll get there when I get there, when in reality, Christ is already holding you to a certain standard because of your age. And obviously the amount of light that you actually have received. You already know this. He's going to judge you by the amount of, uh, what's the word, of what you actually have accepted and what you actually have rejected. If you reject any of this message at any point, he's going to reject you as well. So uh, count the cost. Is it really worth it to be rejected by Christ, to gain the praises of men, just so I could preach God is love and everybody likes me and I get my little likes and then I could reach more individuals? Or should you just continue actually uh, being your own person, just deviating yourselves from that path and actually walking alone and just doing everything that Christ himself actually wants you to do. Uh, that is obviously what I was actually trying to say earlier, that you're going to have to develop a mind of yourself. And you're really going to have to take this journey and this walk alone uh, with Christ to do everything that Christ himself actually says without letting anyone influence your decisions or your judgments or your righteousness, or your obedience to God. If you want to be more obedient to God, don't let anybody stop you. If you want to be more obedient to God by you actually obeying the law of Moses, why would you let anybody stop you? That's not, that's not, what's the word? They're not going to answer for you at the great white throne judgment. And just based off that alone, 100%, you really need to decide for yourself uh, what's best for you. Uh, you need to do these things for you. You need to do these things for Christ. Uh, you need to do these things 100% for God uh, and obviously be people after God's own heart instead of just being uh, whatever. I have to just, you know, preach these types of messages. God is allowed to preach the, uh, the me these messages to obviously be able to reach the lost. You're not going to want to hear these types of messages. Angel, and you already, you already know, you know how people are. You have to be understanding when in reality you just need to be able to give these individuals these types of warnings. Most of these secular individuals are automatically 100% know these types of, uh, types of messages as truths. And uh, they're just messing with you, uh, sadly. And so, um, let it go, 100%. Uh, so yeah, break any of the curses that are actually inside of your life that are hindering you uh, and that are stopping you from actually being uh, the, the disciple that you actually want to be. And even now, by breaking these curses, Christ himself is actually getting mad because none of you are actually doing it. None of you are actually breaking these curses and you're being too heavily dependent on, on me breaking these curses and not you actually... Uh, finding out and seeing for yourself if these things are actually as easy as I just have done and broken. Um, he obviously wants you to um, to see for yourselves. He doesn't want you being lazy. Uh, he obviously wants you to gain this type of experience 100%. Uh, so yeah, these curses are broken uh, in Jesus Christ's name. Uh, so now you're actually able to cast these devils out. And he's telling me right now to tell you to just cast them out uh, yourself. And obviously because these curses are broken, they have no grounds to be uh, inside of your life. Uh, to be able to harass you. To be able to just um, toy with you. Take advantage of you. And other things like that. And I pray that the graces are loose inside of your vessel. Because the kingdom of heaven dwells inside of you. Uh, that way you actually are able to begin the process and the steps to be able to remain and stay delivered, to actually be able to pick up your Bible, to actually be able to pray for more than an hour, to actually be able to uh, to be this bold, to actually be able to call preachers out that are just, obviously just preaching the same old nonsense and garbage and not really preaching things that are after God's own heart and that God himself obviously wants you to preach uh, 100%.
Amen. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit what else he actually wants to say and talk about. He says spiritual warfare. Everything that I mentioned in this video is 100% spiritual warfare. This is how the devil was actually waging war against you through these justifications. He was using uh, the spirit of justifications or whatever uh, to actually uh, hold you and to maintain you in that uh, way of thinking, in that lukewarm lifestyle. Uh, and in that state of uh, of unrepentance, uh, that way, obviously, he's able to hold you there until the day of judgment, until the great white throne judgment, and then you get thrown into the lake of fire. Even though you already knew that Christ is going to spit you out because you were actually lukewarm. You were just using God's grace as a crutch to ensure you just be able to continue living that type of life. You just continue moving uh, at your own pace. Uh with Christ and as a disciple of Christ. When Christ obviously wants you to be moving at his pace and at the pace that he obviously wants uh, you to move 100%. And so, yeah, you definitely need to actually be able to start to want to uh, and to actually move at the pace that Christ himself actually wants you to move at. Mm. No justifications. That's how the devil was obviously able to deceive you. That's how he was actually able to keep you uh, in that same old loop, in that same old cycle, waiting for answers from God. But obviously God himself wanted you to actually uh, to have an active role, uh, to take more action, and to just actually be a disciple of Christ. You were just living in these own uh, rules and laws that you obviously have set up for yourself. And, and definitions of what would actually define you as a Christian. And you weren't letting Christ himself actually do it at any point whatsoever. Sadness. You were a Christian based on your own standards and not on Christ's standards. So yeah, you're gonna have to fight and break these curses up. Cancel the devil's plans. And take the leap of faith and be bold. Call these false preachers out. Regardless if they say that you have to do it in a loving manner, John. You have to be more Christ-like, John, and everything else, John, everything else, John. Obviously, they're going to say these things on purpose just because uh, what you're saying is obviously making them very uncomfortable. They're being convicted, and they don't like the, the feeling of having to change when they don't want to change. That's how pathetic people actually are, unfortunately. You think that they're not like that and just because they have the title Christian? That is so sad. Uh, you clearly do not know people. You clearly do not know how low people can get, how low people can be, uh, how fake people can actually be, uh, how lazy they could actually be, how lazy they actually are. I already know how lazy people actually are. They read my messages, they watch my messages, but they don't do any of the works. They're just like, oh, wow, sounds good. Maybe I'll get to that point. You need to do it now. You need to start now. If you don't start now, it's now or never for many of you, sadly. And unfortunately, that's just the type of person that you are. You really need to put the pep to your step right away and right now and put these things to practice or you're never going to. And because of, oh, I got to do this tomorrow. The devil is just coming inside of your life to prevent you from actually putting these uh, works to practice. Because he knows if you actually do put these works to practice, you're going to see for yourself that these things are 100% truth and, uh, and real. And then next thing you know, you're going to know that your whole life was a lie. Your pastor is a liar. And uh, you weren't actually saved. I'm crazy. Well, because you actually have prayed to be a, uh, teachable, you pray for a teachable spirit. 
uh, you prayed for obviously all this and more and everything that I have mentioned in this video to be able to serve Christ and you don't want to exhaust yourself to that giant height of I'm just Christ's buddy and this is the place that I'm at right here and you're actually starting yourselves at where Christ actually wants you to start at you being 10 times more wiser than Christians who have been Christians for 10 years 15 years whatever and that's good. He's been trying to get to these types of individuals for 10 years and 15 years, but they don't actually want to listen. Christ does this out of love. If he calls you pathetic, it's because he loves you. If he doesn't tell you anything, it's because he's trying to kill you, sadly. I'm very grateful for Christ telling me that I'm pathetic. I'm very grateful for Christ telling me that I'm, a, I'm an abomination because... <laughs> If he never would have told me these things, I probably would have never changed either way. Um, sadly, that's just how, how it was before this. It's just how I, um, I'm like stuttering. Uh, it's just how I was. This is how I live my life. And me thinking that Christ himself is good and God is love. He's not going to tell me things like that. I was wrong. And then that was a real wake up call for me to actually be able to accept uh God's prison and how he actually is instead of just letting these pastors define him I actually let God define uh, who he actually was and even now obviously I still learn more and more every single day uh, he's still mad he still obviously makes me feel salty uh, and, and everything in between I mean there's plenty of prophets in the scriptures that actually you know reveal that this is actually true uh, with Ezekiel uh, how obviously God commanded him to eat um, food off of dung, off of human dung, but he obviously said, no, I don't want to do that. I've never even eaten anything unclean. And so God told him to eat it off cow's dung. That's humiliating. Uh, that's degrading. Uh, and that's obviously very shameful. Um, God has told me to eat garbage. I said I didn't want to do it. And he said that, well, that's what all these Christians in America are actually doing. They're eating garbage out of the trash can, and they think they're actually eating uh, God's word, when in reality, that's not what is actually happening whatsoever. Uh, that video, I actually said that in a video like three years ago. <laughs> uh, but even then, at that time, they didn't really have the graces to be able to understand and the mercies to be able to actually know for certain that um that is actually truth and the peace and know for certain that is actually true they wanted to continue justifying themselves day in and day out instead of obviously letting christ correct them uh and understanding the reality of the situation and how serious these things actually are uh I still remember that. I still remember actually hearing his voice. He told me to eat the trash can. No, well, not wait. How did it go? I just forget about it. But that's what he said. He said that's what. Oh no, I remember. He used this example to actually be able to uh, to teach Christians in America what they actually were eating. They weren't eating the word of God whatsoever. They were eating trash out of a trash can they're eating garbage out of a garbage can thinking they were actually eating the gospel and that was a flat out lie Pray for a teachable spirit. Pray to be wise. Pray for wisdom. Pray for my wife. Pray for my children. Pray for my family and loved ones. Don't celebrate Christmas. It's pagan. You've been warned.
I stopped celebrating it for the sake of tradition. I haven't celebrated Christmas since 2012. That's nuts. Thank you, people. Uh, have a good day. Have a good night. Um, let me ask the Holy Spirit what else he actually wants me to say. He says, it's nuts, that's about it. Uh, be grateful. Be thankful. Pray for mercy for lying to God for eight years. Because you're definitely not going to escape wrath. I can tell you right now, right off the bat, you're not going to escape anytime soon. You're going to have to pay for that forever and ever. And Christ is not going to let you off the hook as easy as you think. He's going to continue letting you be led astray. God is love. God is love. How many messages have you heard? And barely you heard this message for you to actually be able to understand that they're fake. They're fake Christians. They're hypocritical Christians. And they preach a cursed gospel. And you're over here thinking that these individuals are sent from the Lord because everybody praises them. And now you're actually able to see how foolish you actually looked. I can tell you right now you're not going to escape wrath that easy. For lying to God for eight years. Count your blessings. Because you might not make it. It's not going to be that easy. Sorry. And Christ and God are going to make sure that it's not that easy for you to get out. And obviously, I'll just close this video with just one scripture. He said, um, "Pray to be, be um, pray to be counted worthy to stand before the Son of Man, and to escape these things, and to escape the wrath of God." Amen. Thank you.